Hey everyone, uh, my name is Andy. My channel is Finding Value. Uh, sometimes a lot of people they want to dig in a little bit and learn learn a little bit more uh, about the uses of say platinum. So I'm going to touch on hydrogen fuel cells. Uh, there are some people that say that they're looking at uh, different alternatives to using platinum. Uh, that is true. They are. They're trying to eliminate platinum uh, where they can because platinum is a precious metal and it is expensive. Uh, but they're having trouble and difficulty doing that because the, the properties of platinum uh, work very well for this application. I'm going to go over an, uh, a hydrogen fuel cell presentation uh, talking mainly about Bosch. Bosch is a very large uh, OEM producer of automotive equipment. So uh, I want to go over kind of what they have and what they're putting in their technology and what they're going to mass produce here very soon. So this is hydrogen fuel cells. And at the end of this, I'm going to also go over um, the use of it in internal combustion engines and the demand for internal combustion engines at the end, since this is kind of a platinum focused uh, presentation. So this is hydrogen fuel cells that I'm gonna cover. Uh, the introduction here is Bosch is a major manufacturer of OEM components. That is what I'm covering. Uh, they do a lot of research to ensure that they have the highest quality materials with the highest manufacturing processes uh, to do an OEM build for fuel cells. Uh, they are producing a fuel cell for hydrogen with platinum as one of the components in it. Uh, they've done extensive research and consider platinum a critical element for fuel cells at this current stage of development. This is what a fuel stack looks like on the left here. Uh, roughly 400 fuel cells deliver 120 kilowatts of power. Inside of here, they have these guys stacked up like this. And I'll show you kind of how it works uh, later on in this presentation. Uh, reliable mass manufacturing is what they're going for. Uh, hydrogen molecules are small in size. They are the smallest of any molecule and have low viscosity, which means the stack has to have a perfect seal to operate efficiently and safely. The ability to pre-select the appropriate manufacturing method for components while designing a product is what they try to do. So they try to make sure that they have the appropriate manufacturing methods for whatever they're going to design into the product. So they're always thinking a step ahead and they want to put the highest quality products in there uh, and, and materials and components for their fuel cells. This is one kilogram of hydrogen for each 100 kilometer driven. So that's actually a pretty good energy density uh, that hydrogen can store. And that's what makes hydrogen so appealing in comparison to uh, battery electric vehicles. The fuel cell operation here. So fuel cells are designed to produce direct current. It's created by conducting the hydrogen electrons through the anode where they make their way through the external circuit and return to the cathode. An inverter then converts DC into the alternating current AC that powers the electric motor. And this is how the fuel stack works. We've got hydrogen H2 fuel coming on the left-hand side, getting recycled back. We've got the catalyst. And on the right-hand side, we've got oxygen O2 from air. And then what's released is air and water vapor. As, it, as the hydrogen goes across the proton exchange membrane, uh, generating electricity. The catalyst there in these membranes, um, they have platinum in them. That's one of the key elements uh, for this fuel stack to work properly. The manufacturing costs here. So Bosch and the startup Power Cell Sweden aim to solve that problem. Uh, they came together uh, and, and joined a synergy to develop and manufacture uh, these fuel cells. To bring costs down, the two companies are focusing their attention on the fuel cell stack, the heart of the hydrogen powertrain. The stack of proton exchange membrane fuel cells, also known as polymer electrolyte membrane, PEM, fuel cells, is where an electrochemical exchange of the reactant gases, hydrogen and oxygen, produce electricity. And that's what we went over in the previous slide. Uh, the Bosch fuel cell materials. Bosch fuel cells um, are going to use the same amount of platinum as a diesel car. Uh, platinum is only going to be a minor role in fuel cells according to Bosch. So approximately three to seven grams of platinum per vehicle is the estimate for seal fuel cells that Bosch has designed. They are going to be building in mass scale in 2022. And just for an FYI, 
China is targeting 2 million vehicles by 2030. So why fuel cells over battery electric vehicles? Filling up takes a matter of minutes. It's got a longer range than battery electric vehicles. They're great for heavy vehicles and buses, where I think the adoption is going to be quite substantial in relationship to batteries. If fuel cells take off and are adopted in boats and trains, demand for platinum could take off. The global demand for platinum for all fuel cells from vehicles is forecast to rise to 366,000 ounces by 2030, and then surge to 965,000 ounces when including other fuel cell hydrogen uses, like the boats, trains, and, and whatnot. Fuel cell development, just to let you know what they're trying to do. Uh, while the ultimate goal is to eliminate platinum for, from hydrogen fuel cell catalysts entirely, Lou said that the current research opens up a new direction in addressing both fuel cell catalyst activity and durability in a cost-effective way. Since the new catalysts require only an ultra-low amount of platinum, similar to that used in existing automobile catalytic converters, it could help to ease the transition from conventional internal combustion engines to fuel cell vehicles without disrupting the platinum supply chain and market, he said. Obviously, that's just his, his opinion. Uh, they are trying to eliminate platinum, but they're having difficulties completely eliminating it. Uh, even when they try using cobalt uh, and other materials in the fuel cell membrane, uh, it seems like they're always trying to dope a little bit of platinum back into it uh, using trace amounts of platinum uh, to have it be more durable and, and, and a little bit more efficient in, in fuel cell uh, battery use. So the platinum demand here, the platinum price, again, I want to I wanna make sure everyone understands this. The platinum price does not depend on fuel cell demand. Fuel cells are just icing on the cake. Hybrid vehicles are going to dominate many countries because of the infrastructure they have is not conducive to battery electric vehicles. They can't just plug in battery electric vehicles into the wall. They're going to probably have to go with something else, uh, either a hybrid internal combustion engine using gasoline or maybe fuel cell or something completely different, or maybe just an internal combustion engine in, in its entirety. This is the outlook for annual global passenger car and light duty vehicle sales to 2030. This is the global ice. This is internal combustion engines in the dark blue here. And as you can see, if you were to look in 2010, we would be producing roughly almost the same as 2029 ish, 2028. So we're not really producing that much less internal combustion engine cars. We're really just stacking on the growth to battery electric vehicle, PHEVs, and EV uh, shares, electric vehicle shares. So these are all electric vehicles but we're not drastically reducing the internal combustion engine uh, over, the, over the years, at least till 2030. This is the LMC Auto LDV. This is the ICE internal combustion engine hybrids sale forecast. And we're at 2021 and it's just ramping up dramatically. Uh, so the hybrids are really what's ramping up uh, at the moment. Uh, it's not I mean, battery electric vehicles are so in their infancy that that any growth is going to be substantial. But right now, what's in its growth curve is actually the hybrids, uh, especially in the advanced economies. And here is the global auto catalyst demand. Uh, we've got the dark kind of blue is platinum. We've got rhodium uh, on this up top and then palladiums in the middle. And if you notice, uh, we're ramping up rhodium use, but rhodium's coming into problems. That's why the price is going like it's just moonshotting. But palladium is supposedly going to grow quite substantially. And if palladium's growing substantially, that's going to be a benefit for platinum because platinum is a substitute to palladium. And that's what we saw in the previous presentation that I've given about platinum, where platinum's going to start substituting palladium. And I think that platinum demand is obviously going to go far higher. Uh, if palladium has issues and goes into major deficits uh, going forward into the future. And again, uh, palladium demand, since platinum is a substitute to palladium, more demand will come from hybrid cars and ICE cars for palladium, or for, yeah, I said for platinum, than palladium currently exists. So they're, they're going to have problems with palladium because the demand is increasing quite substantially and they don't have the palladium uh, production to back it up. 
And I think platinum is going to be rapidly substituted for palladium in the near term and the long term. That's what it's. That's what we've said, and I, and what I've read on basically anything uh, because palladium's price is coming under pressure, which means platinum that is half the cost will be the substitute. All platinum group metals will be used in catalytic converters worldwide and are needed to reduce emissions. So uh, I don't see this gigantic ramp up of electric vehicles and it really taking a large market share of internal combustion engines on a global scale, at least not yet. And I don't think it will ever, ever in my lifetime. And the reason I say that is because a lot of the countries don't have the infrastructure built out like some of these advanced economies. So some of the advanced economies, I think, yes, like Europe, uh, Americas, yes. South America, perhaps not as much, perhaps not as much in Asia, in certain in certain portions, a lot of third world countries, Africa, whatnot, it may never uh, materially take place. So what they're going to do is they're going to add the inter internal combustion engine cars or the hybrids, and then they're going to not you know, all the other places may ramp up their electric vehicle use. So I think this is all, it's all going to go way up and we're going to need absolutely everything. Uh, I think fuel cell vehicles have their place. Uh, I think battery electric vehicles have their place. And I think internal combustion engines and hybrids have their place. So I think we're going to use everything. Uh, I don't think that there's going to be one solution and I don't think it's going to be all or nothing in one area. I think everything's going to be used and I think we're going to have problems with everything. <laughs> That's uh, nickel, copper, platinum, palladium, rhodium, all of it. We're all gonna we're gonna we're gonna use everything we can uh, to the fullest, and I think prices are gonna go up substantially for everything. That's that's what I think. If you guys like this content, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Don't know what you're waiting for, and leave comments below on what you guys think. Thanks for listening. This is Finding Value.